I started listening to dance music around middle school. And during this time, if I ever told anybody what kind of music I like, they would always go, oh, you like that kind of unts, 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 unts music. You obviously had that party boy skit where the guy dances in a very raunchy outfit, but the song itself, bonk, bonk. Now, offbeat basslines have been utilized to define genres like Melbourne Bounce and have been huge parts of genres like trance. And to this day, even in the modern age, Fisher just came out with a song with an offbeat bass. It's a great setup to use because it's one of the friendliest as well. Now, if you follow this tutorial, I hope you understand the theory as you can do this in any synthesizer out there. The only reason I'm utilizing Serum is because it's very visual and it's a lot easier to explain some of the things we need to talk about. When we have a one on the four kick, we're going to have pretty much a kick that's going to be hitting on the one, the 1 1.2, the 1.3, the 1.4, and then we go to the two. Now the offbeat bass is going to land at the 1.1.3, which we call the offbeat, and it will usually hit with the open hat as well. The cool thing about the offbeat bass though is that when you first do a drop, you can omit the open hat and it sounds so good. Just good kick and good bass. Someone like Boris Brecha. So knowing this, we're going to program the offbeat bass at G3 here, and we're just going to drop it in at the halfway mark, as we said. Yes. Now the hard part, designing the sound. Since we picked the three range, and what that means is the third octave, C3 to C4, G3 lands in between that, then I know that I need to set my octave range down to negative three. This is gonna give me a saw that sounds at its lowest, which is where we wanted to create bass. We also know this is the lowest because my fundamental frequency, which just means this guy here, where all the low end is provided, is not below 30 hertz. Now if I go too low, you're gonna notice that we're pretty much below 30 hertz, which I like to call the, 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 the lowest level of hell, I guess. Okay, so this is a mistake I see a lot, so we wanna avoid that. So just understand that if you're in Ableton and you're using Serum, C3 will usually relate to negative three inside of Serum. This can change for many synths, but it seems to be the norm. Another mistake I see is people putting the bass too high up, which makes it sound like the bass is landing at a very high range, 95.8. Now, if I boost that, that's not the kind of low end you want. Now, from the oscillator section, if we want just to utilize this section, we can use different waveforms. If you wanna be my official student, then take this warning to heart. Um, I command you not to utilize anything like a spectral or a digital waveform, etc. Try and stick to the basic shapes. Uh, you could use the Juno one as well. And the reason for this is that a lot of the wavetables will provide more interesting sounding but they're not as fat and they usually, if you don't know what you're doing with them, uh, you can get weak bass lines in your tracks. A saw is a good option. A triangle is also good. It's a more saturated sine wave. Just means there's more upper frequencies on it. And then from there we go into the pulse waves, which are just squares that have been, I like to call thinned out. You know, they're on the Atkins diet because they just sound thinner, but they sound different. And then you got a tri saw, which is also good. From there, this is the basics of it. We have an offbeat bass, which you would hear in some very retro kind of music. Now, from here, we're going to utilize filters. Now, filters are meant to shape the sound, okay? And the way they shape is by taking away. That's where the term subtractive synthesis comes from in a lot of these synths, like silent, etc. Moog synthesizers are subtractive synthesizers. Now, utilizing a low pass, we're going to use here the MG Low 24. We'll explain what that is in a sec. But we're going to lower the cutoff because I want to remove the high frequencies. Notice that it leaves a lot of space now in the upper frequencies for the drums to pop out. And also if you have a synth, etc., cetera, uh, this is the way you wanna have it set up because it makes room for stuff. So here we're just utilizing a filter. We can add a bit of drive for saturation, more oomph. From there, the number next to that, that you see 24, 18, those are gonna be DB pole filters. All you have to know about them is that the higher they are up, the more strict, the less highs it allows out. In the lower, you can see it allows more highs out. So in 12, mm, 18, 24. From here, what we're gonna do is utilize an envelope now to shape this bad boy because you, you probably want a lot more from this. Now you wanna smack it, okay? So what we're gonna do is set up envelope two, lower the sustain all the way down. Okay, and then we're gonna route this guy here to the cutoff. Now you're gonna see this blue line. This is considered the modulation amount. Think of it as this is you going here 
and then coming back. That's what that is going to do. And we're going to use envelopes, ADSR, dynamics in order to make it work. Okay. ADSR stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. If you don't know anything about sound design, I recommend you spend most of your time understanding those uh, parameters. And I'll make sure to leave something here where I explain it in Serum if you want a more in-depth view. But the reason we lower the sustain is just, again, we want to go from the highest amount the blue is set all the way back to the original value now the speed that we do that in is going to be the decay we're instantly going to go up and then we're going to come down in the decay decides how long that takes very sexy you know ready for the thailand strip clubs okay so we can see now from here, this is where producers are born because this is where it can get very finicky. You want to get the right amount of cutoff and the right amount of cutoff amount, okay? Now, what I usually recommend is you set your cutoff to somewhere where without this modulation still sounds good and it sounds strong. Around here seems fine. From there, now we can play with this. And now we have that. Now, the next thing that we can introduce here is a bit of resonance. Resonance is going to be the peak at where the cutoff starts to pretty much reduce. And if you notice here, it gives at low values a lot of great dump. And at high volumes, it gives you that very squelchy sound. If you find the bass isn't working for you and it's not making you want to dance, a lot of the times, again, this is where the money's at. Now, in envelope one, in most synthesizers, this will be the amp envelope. The amp envelope controls the volume coming out of our synths here. Now, this is where you're going to play with the dynamics of the sound, the amplitude, the volume. Okay, so most of the time we start very high up, aka the loudest we can get. But from there, we can go down to a sustain level which is going to be when I'm holding down the MIDI note, which again, you can see here in the piano, I'm holding that down. It's going to be that volume. Okay. Now, of course, you know, we understand the correlation between the kick and bass, right? The kick is going to take up this part and then the bass takes up the rest. In order for this to work, we need to make sure that offbeat bass has this handled. It's like the homie, you know, can't let me down fool. If I put this really short, we lose all the power. And if I put this really long, we don't really have that un, 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 un vibe that we, we once we have that we can bring our filter back in because now we understand what the amp envelope is doing and now we have from here we can utilize an oscilloscope to show us how it looks you can see the kick hits and then from there the offbeat bass is going to take over and we want this offbeat bass to reach to the end if i make this too short you can see what happens. We don't reach the end. We don't have enough amplitude, so we lose a lot of the power. So again, we have to get this right. High sustain. Notice how it gets fat all the way through, which is fine if you want that. And then lower. We get a bit of dynamics going from loud to quiet. Play around with it. From here, we can start to introduce uh, an upper layer here to give us a bit of help. Again, just use the basic shapes. From here, we can level this. Now, we don't want the level to be that loud, but we want to put it somewhere where it's emphasizing and supporting the saw we have. And let's not forget to route it into the filter by hitting that button. Now, notice as we're doing this, we hear the bass. It's sort of changing, and it's not sounding how we had it before. Well, the reason for this is that now we can introduce a retrig. Now, retrig is going to make it so that the wavetables start at the same position every single time, so that way it always sounds the same. And the way we execute that here is by moving the random face to 0%. Now, notice there's this yellow outcast. This yellow outcast is pretty much telling us the randomness. Like, this face can start anywhere in that yellow outcast, which leads to that effect that you just heard, which is an which is okay effect. But if you want power... Ran face down, ran face down, and then pick. And there we go. From there, we can start to process the, the baseline further. So this is where you might use Decapitator, Fab Filter Saturn, the Ableton Overdrive, the Saturator. Now, there's a warning that I heed to you. 
We have dynamics in play right now. If I distort this heavily, I lose all of the dynamics, as you can see. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it's up to you. So you have to be wary as you distort or saturate. You are going to introduce more frequencies, more upper harmonics, right? But you lose a lot of the dynamics, which is a good thing or bad, depending on. Now, what I like to do is I like to use the same envelope I use for the cutoff and put it on the drive. So that way I still get some of the effect of the saturation. But I preserve my dynamics a lot more than just setting this up here. I do that. You can consider that as sort of dynamic distortion. But pretty much, again, it's the same thing with the filter. We're just putting it here. We have the amount that we want to go to, and then we're controlling that with our ADSR settings. And there we go. Okay, from there, no reverb, no none of that. If you want to put reverb, make sure you do a low cut. And usually a low size reverb. From here, you can make so many different kinds of variations of this. You can change that to Keep it simple at first, and you should be good to go. Now, when it comes to the sidechain of this kind of bass, you don't really need a sidechain because the kick again is going to be located here. The low end reaches to a certain amount. Now there is a bit of interaction as you can see with these two guys here because this kick is just very long. It doesn't matter because the volume is not as high as it is over here. If they interact there, then that's when you might want to like, mm. now I'm going to show you guys how to make some very donkey different kinds if you're looking to make other stuff. Okay. So the other thing we can do is utilize again, basic shapes and use a uh, sine wave, but now we can do what we like to call the Russian donk <laughs> bass. Now, the only difference here is that we're going to utilize oscillator B the same way we have it set up, but this time the level is going to be set low from here. We're going to use here to the warp feature and put FM from B. It stands for frequency modulation from B. Now, frequency modulation is a whole, 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 whole other beast. The, the most I can explain is you have FM ratios. For instance, here we have negative three to negative three. That's a one to one ratio. If that goes up, then that means we're going to introduce higher frequencies as we do FM, but at the exchange of some low end, so more mid lows instead of subbiness. Okay, and we got to play with this. Okay, now this is where, again, sound design gets very like finicky. A lot of people always say, I copied your tutorial and it doesn't sound the same. That's because it's very finicky because look, look at how much changes when I move this guy down. Um, and again, FM stands for frequency modulation. And this guy's down because this is what we would consider the modulator. And this is the operator. So this guy's coming into this guy and all kinds of comings are coming. Uh, but it changes the sound. It gives you more upper harmonics to the sign. And then if you change that FM ratio. Okay, you see, see what I mean? So from there, we introduce a filter to add shape and body. Okay, now the last thing that we need to cover, again, there's going to be various different forms of wavetables you can use. Learn, again, learn to use the basics to create amazing bass lines, and then from there you can go on and use wavetables. But one of the things that a lot of Melbourne Browns producers used to do would be layering. So that would be utilizing this as a layer and then layering something else. I want to cover this just because I want you guys to be well equipped to handle the world. So for instance, we have that right from there. Let's say that I want to come in with this cashmere loop and I want to layer it on top of this wall. The only thing you need to understand is that making music is like jigsaw. If your bass is taking up a certain amount of frequencies, then it's not going to leave enough space for other stuff to come in and join the party. So if knowing that you want to make sure that you're doing this like a jigsaw. So for instance, this bass, we're going to design it so that it sounds more subby than anything. We'll have it higher up. Let's put the sustain up. 
Okay, we got a good basis from there. We're going to utilize this cashmere one. We're just going to do Command Shift T. We're going to drop that there. One shot mode. Set that here. So this is the roller D. Okay, we're going to transpose this to C, which is two semitones down. From there, let's maybe add a fade out. Now, the only thing that I want you to know as a SimWorld student is that we're going to cut out the lows of this. Okay. And we need to have like somewhat of a flip flop with our original base. So this base, the saw base is going to cover this. And then the top base is going to cover this. From here, you can start to process this guy on top further. Some last final additions to do guys. The formula will always be the same when it comes to offbeat bases, but the thing that changes is the amount of processing and how producers decide to add their own twist to the fundamentals, the basics. So hopefully this video helps the people that it needs to help. And if you're an advanced producer that never understood sound design, hopefully it helps you understand it a bit better. I'm a firm believer that learning a bit of sound design will help you in the mixing stages and in the songwriting phases of your music. Because once you know how to shape certain presets to fit a bit rolling bass or an offbeat bass, you can make any preset be an offbeat bass. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to further your knowledge in sound design you can check out this video i made called the beginner's guide to rolling bass lines where i teach you guys the basics the fundamentals to creating your own rolling bass lines now when it comes to the offbeat bass there's a bit of interaction that occurs but it's a whole different other beast and with that said if you want to support the channel you can find all my sound design work over at evilsounds.com